All right, Jazz. What do you got? According to the latest, the comp spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? We could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jimson. Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. I sure hope so. But she might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's gonna be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. Basically, you break it, you bought it. Hmm. Interesting. Well, don't take any chances. Nave is right. Just grab everything labeled comm spike that isn't nailed down. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops. And we both know those idiots don't mess around. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal, because you're gonna need it. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so, I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. <laughs> okay, you'll make sure. More like, get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. And you, get the hell out of here, and don't come back without that calm spike in your cargo bay. Stay sharp, Rook. Take your neighbor's new recruit? That you're new, but capable. Other than that, not a whole lot. Neva talks a lot, but that's not the same as talking too much. You're still a mystery to me. That's why 920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So to get it, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that, but I have conditions. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. But make no mistake, once you board, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is not an option. Good, then we have a deal. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, 
You can't come and go as you please. We'll talk more on the ship. Howdy. Oh, so always the looking for the next mark. In, life's good. Glad you're in the fleet. If you weren't, I would have killed you already. Excuse me. All right. A few things to note. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Return your piece of cargo if you have to. Of course, I don't expect it to be. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. If you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. All right. Then get comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to engine and grab drive. All systems go. We'll grab jump to SY920 from here. Don't worry about your personal ship. The fleet will make sure it's secure. You can take this time to prepare. Just try not to bother my pilot while they're flying. Don't worry, Captain. I've spent half my life walking and chewing gum at the same time. I can handle a little banter. Sounds like you're putting in a request for double duty. Captain, I retract my earlier statement. For the record, I don't even like gum. <laughs> Noted. Just get us there safe. Roger that. Okay, we're in. First things first. The station is enormous, with checkpoints everywhere. To get past them, you'll need a military uniform. And to get a uniform, you'll need to get to the barracks. There should be a way through the vents. You can get to them via the maintenance door downstairs. There's an intercom there as well, where we can make contact. Once you get a uniform, it should be fairly easy to find an elevator to the command bay. But if at any point your cover's blown, I'm gone. I would hope not. But if they do, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Either way, for now, get on that station and find that intercom. We'll talk more then. Hey.
with the Jade Swan? Loading and unloading only. Stay clear of the blitz. Need your clearance code, Marine. All right, Ensign, let's hear it. Your clearance, Nakasaka. Commander Natara, test lights for the latest prototypes are ready to go.
request for more personnel. It seems there was an accident. Ugh. It's always something with that doctor. Not to change the subject, but are we concerned about the potential? No. Until you can provide us. The team is looking for more. Yes. Pilots. What? Can you talk to the commander? Get me reinstated? The tower is doing you a favor, Marcin. Do you prefer to court martial? Dishonorable discharge? Because all of that was on the table. I would have preferred things to remain as they were, so I made a mistake. But my work on the cum spike was and is irrelevant. Dr. Vogel will do just fine without you. Besides, we hmm. both know the only reason you were on that project. The data in the the blow system might be promising. Wait, who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? Don't you mean access to the ship? Because the comm spike isn't a device, it's a module. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types. But the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. Yes, it's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts, and the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. Yes, it's not the destination, but the journey that matters. <laughs> Particularly when the destination is death. But don't worry. We've corrected the problem with the ship's life support systems, and statistical models show a failure rate of less than 2%. In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, we can present our findings to Mast. Splendid. That was fast. I thought I put in the request this morning. Normally my requests aren't given this much attention let alone haste. It seems a tad suspicious. I see. It would have been nice if they kept me in the loop. I, I am the project lead, after all. All right, you've convinced me. You're the new task pilot. You're already in uniform, so that means you just need a password. You'll find the prototype ship at docking bay 8. Use the password to access the flight terminals in the control center. And of course, best of luck. You are doing science a great service by undertaking this sacrifice. Reporting for duty, pilot. Access granted. Be sure to head to the control center and schedule the flight. And good luck. Man, it is a lot of work.
prototype ship, you are cleared for takeoff. We'll begin the test on your departure. Recording test flight data. Please adhere to the scheduled flight plan and let us know if you have any issues. Mixed feelings. Nice to know Neva was right about you. It's good to have a promising rookie with the fleet. I won't deny I helped. Let's hope the compensation reflects that, huh? You bail before I can make the offer, but I'd like to buy you a drink to say thanks. It's the last time I'm paying, of course. Because if Dalgado's right about Crix's legacy, You've earned more than your fair share already with that calm spike. You read my mind. I don't like the thought of putting my routes in jeopardy over an old story. But I respect Delgado and I believe he's on to something. What that is though, remains to be seen. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. Now that you've had your drink and my debt is paid, it's time for you to give Delgado the good news. Certainly. Let's talk about something else. Okay. How did the Crimson Star become the Crimson Fleet? After I busted out of the lock, I decided... Those mission boards aren't going to clear themselves. A couple dozen ex-cons at my side. Once word got around, it didn't take long for freelance pirates from every corner of the settled systems to show up. And this is how the Crimson Fleet was born. Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us the comp spike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. Should have taken the compliment, Rook. Dale doesn't give those out often. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash and grab operation. She gave you some really high praise. Said you were a pro. And from what I hear, receiving praise from Juan Dayu is quite an accomplishment. All in all, a job well done. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Com spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right, that leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Jennerdyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption tech and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. you damn right she can. My girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. 
Literally, I've seen her do it. Lost good money on that bet. All right, let's not get carried away, neighbor. Now, why don't you give us the info on our neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of neon for some time now. Whatever info you need, I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward, we all split the cash. Don't worry. When Grixis Legacy is aboard the key, we'll be splitting plenty of cash. Until then, I want you to do everything Estelle asks. Follow her instructions to a letter. She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting. But chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the price. Neon's one big distraction for people like us. So I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy. And we cannot afford any screw-ups. things for you. You might want this. Things were a little too loose under Commander Woods. It seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. But you did so with an abundance of stealth and restraint. That's exactly what we're looking for in a SysDev operative. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but... There's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short, and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. Then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? The conduction grid? That's... Brilliant, but is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer, like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. It's long overdue. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful.